performance data at all themselves. You, you tell it, I want to look at this bit of performance data at the moment. And off it goes and figures out what that means and displays it in a way that makes sense. Uh, and it's been distributed, so from day one, it's always supported monitoring multiple machines at once, potentially. And we use that capability extensively at Aconex. So we're a very high level. This is the, the basic architecture. There's, there's a lot more detail than this, but this is a good starting point. So on the left-hand side, we have PMCD, which is the performance metrics collection daemon. That's the main daemon for doing live performance monitoring in TCP. It doesn't actually know anything at all about performance data. Uh, it basically acts as a multiplexer between clients that are asking for current values of performance data. And these uh, PMDAs, we call them, that plug into PMCD. PMDA stands for Performance Metric Domain Agent. And each agent knows about a specific domain. So it might be a database agent, a Linux kernel agent, a specific hardware agent. Uh, in our case at Aconex, we have an Aconex application agent which exports data of interest to us. It's really not interesting from this talk's point of view what Aconex does, but it's very important to us to be able to see exactly what's going on inside our application. And we don't have to write performance tools to do that. We just have to expose our data into TCP. Um, and then on the right-hand side, we have some of the, the clients that ship with TCP. Um, there's far more than that. I'll talk about some of, them, some of the other ones later, but these are the, the most critical ones, probably. Uh, PM Logger is the tool that collects live performance data and stores it for archive purposes, so you can go back to it later and look at yesterday's or the day before's data or last, last month's. Uh, it runs, I'll talk a bit more about that on the next slide, I'll skip, skip that for now. Uh, KM Chart is a graphical tool, a graphical strip chart tool, and you can basically, when you start it up, it doesn't actually display anything by default. You go in and you say, I want to I want to look at this metric. Um, and these other metrics, and I want them. I want a, a red plot with a plot at every five seconds, and off it goes and does its thing, and starts plotting at every five seconds. I'll show you an example of that in the demo. Uh, and another important tool is PMIE, and so both CamChart and PMIE run live in archive mode, so you can point CamChart and PMIE at live hosts or at historical data, and they work the same way. Uh, PMIE stands for Performance Metrics Inference Engine. And that's a sort of little artificial intelligence tool. And you feed it rules about performance that, you're, that you believe to hold true at certain points when badness happens. And it evaluates them on whatever interval you ask it to. And when they become true, it'll either, it'll take some action. And there's several actions it can take. It just print something out or it can run a command for you or write to your system log. Or there's five or six different actions that it can take. Um, so still operating at the high level here. Um, but this is the basic data model that PCP implements. Uh, the very central concept to PCP is the idea of a performance metric. And performance metrics are extremely well defined, as I'll talk about at the end. Um, a metric can only comes from one place. That's either a, a host, a specific host. So if I tell CamChart I want to look at this metric on this host, that metric comes from that host. Or it comes from that archive. Um, the, the host or archive can be queried at any interval by any monitor tool. So you configure it however you want as you run it, and it'll mo monitor for you at that interval. And they're all configurable. So um, that becomes more interesting in archive mode. Um, so the, going back to the, the concept of a, a metric, all of the metrics are named using a simple so ASCII hierarchical name. So for example there, we've got the number of read operations in the kernel. Uh, that's dist.dev.read, uh, and that would be a, a free-running counter that the Linux kernel maintains or the Windows kernel, whichever kernel you're monitoring. And that's maintained in the kernel, and that data is exported out through the on Linux, the Linux kernel agent, uh, and we have a simple name for it. Uh, I'll skip that one. Metrics are singular or set-valued, and if it's a set-value, it's said to have an instance domain. That example before, dist.dev.read has an instance domain, so that's for every device in the system, every disk device in the system, you, you're counting the number of reads. So that, that particular metric doesn't just export the one value, but it exports a value for every disk that you have on your system. But still just the one metric name, and fundamentally it's one metric. So the, the base unit is the number of reads to a device. It just happens to be enumerated over all of your devices. And critically important to PCP, 
is that every single me metric that you define is very well defined. It has to be well defined, otherwise it can't operate within PCP and the tools, the client tools, aren't able to make sense of a metric unless they know exactly what it is. And if you can define exactly what it is, then the tools operate very well. Um, so you have to know things like, is this metric uh, a signed 32-bit integer, uh, unsigned 64-bit, is it double, float, string, whatever? What are the semantics of the metric? Um, the units and scale, or is it a counter or an instantaneous value? So if a counter is a pre-running counter that never goes backwards typically, so when the system boots in this disk.dev.read example, it typically start at zero and they just keep running. Every time you do a read, it adds one onto that counter. So when you look at that metric at any particular point in time, it's not actually interesting on its own. Um, when you sample it again the next time, you can um, work out how much it's changed in that delta, and that is interesting. Um, so the, the client tools need to know whether it's a counter or an instantaneous value. An instantaneous value doesn't have that s semantics. It just means like there are five users logged in at the moment, or there are seven users logged in, and you don't care what's happened before or after. It doesn't, isn't really interesting in terms of the client tools. Um, and it also, obviously, whether there's an instance domain or not associated with the metric is important as well. So there's simple conceptual diagram. So heading back to the title of the talk, we're doing performance management with PCP. Um, and in terms of management, we want to be able to manage all parts of the performance timeline. So we need to be able to understand what has happened in the past in order to understand what is happening now, and it also in order to be able to make predictions about what's going to happen in the future. Uh, and PCP can help us in several ways with these things. Um, so PM Logger, the tool I talked about before, which I'll talk bit more detail about on the next slide is the thing that will produce archives going back in time. Um, I've got a lot more detail on that one. Um, we can also do live monitoring with almost all of the same tools. I'll give a quick demo on that. And we can do mod modeling and statistical prediction. So if we're keeping track of the data that we've seen historically going backwards, um, then we can use statistical tools to predict what's going to happen in the future. Uh, so PCP is mainly aimed at the, the first two points, um, and it has several mechanisms to help you with the third. So we use it for all three of these things at A-Connect. Um, so talking a bit more about logging of performance data, like I was saying before, PM Logger is the central tool there. Uh, it's, uh, like most of the PCP tools, a completely generic tool. It doesn't actually know anything about performance data, um, or specific bits of performance data. It only knows about generic things. Um, so it can log arbitrary metrics at arbitrary intervals. You configure it. You say, I want to log this.dev.read every five minutes or every 30 seconds, and off it goes, and it will do that for you. Uh, so one instance of PM Logger produces one PCP archive for one host. So when you're monitoring multiple hosts, there's one PM Logger for each host, and PCP helps you with monitoring multiple hosts at once. We, we monitor uh, well over 100 hosts at AconX using PCP. Um, and a bit about archives, so the actual implementation, the, an archive it's, consists of a metadata file, a temporary index for quick access to that file, and, some, and then the data volume, potentially one or more. There's some scripts that will help you um, keep the data flying from PMLogger. So PMLogger daily does daily log rotation, make sure that yesterday's performance data is named with a file that's yesterday's date, uh, and we'll do the log rotation each night. Uh, which isn't as simple as just rotating a log file, obviously. This is binary data we're talking about. Uh, PM logger check will make sure that uh, your, all the PM loggers that are meant to be running are running. And if you configure it to monitor 100 hosts, PM logger check will make sure that it is monitoring all of those hosts. Uh, I'm going to skip over these because we're running out of time. <laughs> okay, I'm going to skip over that. <laughs> it stands for what you think it stands for. Um, PM Log Summary is a statistical analysis tool. So you point it at, say, yesterday's archive, and it will tell you a bunch of statistics about all of the data in that archive. So what their maximums were, the averages um, for each metric. PM WTF is a shell script which runs PM Log Summary for two different days. So you have a, a day where everything's gone to crap, and you have another day where you know everything was fine, and it'll take both those two archives and look for statistical outliers, so things that were vastly different, and we'll report on those for you. So it'll give, it gives you a good point to start looking for where things might have gone wrong. 
So I won't go straight into the demos because they're probably more interesting. You might learn a bit more than just me talking. Um, but this is a demo about the strip chart tool called CamChart, which um, implements all these things, provides all these services. So uh, I've brought along with me some of our performance data from th this year. This is a, an actual performance problem that we had in production here. We have um, our architecture, it's not really, I won't go into too much detail, but we use SQL Server on Windows for some of our, for all of our databases. Um, and we use PCP remotely, uh, PCP monitoring from Linux monitoring machines, monitoring Windows remotely to keep an eye on them. Uh, and this is this year's performance data up until the end of last week. Um, and the, on one of these days, we had a particular problem that was picked up. So this is the, oh, I should go through this command line quickly. Uh, this is an archive name, so the, this is the data for that date, minus A for archive. And these are different uh, views, which I'm telling PM, uh, KM chart that I'm interested in. The first one is CPU utilization, so green being idle, red being system kernel time, as you can see there, blue being user time. So first thing in the morning, so we've got a unified time axis down here, everything's pretty quiet, and this is uh, disk, uh, uh, what is that, the read and write rate, so across all of the disk spindles, um, both Linux and Windows will sum all of the read and write counters for you and export that as a single value, so PCP exports that on. So now we can move through the archive at any point that we're interested in, and stop, and the chart will update for that particular point. Uh, and if I remember correctly, I had it sort of, and so then you can play and you can go forwards and backwards and you can change mode into step mode or go fast forward, fast backwards. So I'll just step through, or play through up until uh, a little bit later. So in the short time, only about quarter past 11, about now, everything went to crap. <laughs> so we were, everything was chugging along nicely. This is a normal sort of background SQL Server CPU. CPU utilization chart that we'd see, and it slowly sort of choked down to nothingness. And it's at about the same point where it started going down, we started seeing massive amount of disk and uh, both reads and writes, and that's across all the disks. So at this point, we can drill down a bit more. Uh, if I can click this. So we can start looking at per disk statistics. So these are the disk dev statistics I mentioned, disk dev read before. That's expanded for all the disks, but we can also look at utilization. So there's, this is on Windows, obviously, but there's exactly the same sorts of data, except it's like dev SDA <laughs> rather than CD and F, but I'll just grab all those and make a chart of that. And just click on that to go back. So now we can look and see what was going on in each of the devices, for example. So this is just an example of how we might have analyzed a particular production problem but it's just showing off some of the capabilities of PCP. Uh, in this particular example, um, this is our data drive here on the SQL Server, the, is it F, the F drive. And you see, chugging along here, we had a normal background load, and then at the point where everything went bad, it basically tailed off, and we started seeing I.O. to all this, uh, lots of I.O. on the D drive. It suddenly became much more utilized than it normally is, which is not utilized at all. So this is idleness here, maximum idleness. And it chugs along and then it eventually nose dives completely and goes to zero. Uh, as, and then the data drive goes completely uh, idle. So I, I won't go into all the details of that, but um, our temporary database was on the D drive. Our regular data drive is the E drive. And some particular query completely screwed, screwed the plot. <laughs> and um, suddenly we're doing all this I.O. to the temporary database, which is used to hold sorts of data, things like that. Five minutes to check. Okay, let me get rid of that. Okay. I won't go through that. It'll take it too long. Let me go back through here. Okay, a quick spiel about PMIE. I have another demo here, so I might run straight into the demo. But PMIE, like I said before, stands for the Performance Metrics Inference Engine, and you give it rules, and it makes deductions from those rules. Uh, back at the same data, so exactly the same scenario, but now we wanted to look, um, so the next thing I got asked was, have we ever had this problem before? 
Um, so we can use PMIE to answer that question. We basically say, give it a rule about performance. In our case, we're looking at um, oops, uh, SQL Server metrics here. So SQL Server databases, DB data file size, that's the PCP metric name. We're looking at the temporary database and we're looking at the current sample, comparing it to the previous sample. And if they're not the same, we fire off, well, in this case, we just print out and say something bad happened. Uh, and then we can run that through all of the data that I've brought with me for the last two weeks and it chugs off and evaluates at whatever interval I ask it and you see there that was the day we were just looking at where it started firing off all those alerts and for the rest of the data nothing happened so we can tell this is the only time it's happened this year. Uh, I might skip this completely but this is just an example of how you can instrument your own application to um, pass interesting data to you back into the PCP framework and then you can monitor it alongside all the other metrics. And we're running out of time. So I'm going to skip this one completely so I can go to the last demo. Did I miss a demo? Yeah, here's a demo. So this is a live demo. So the last two were um, historical demos. This one's live, so it's a little bit more interesting. Perhaps. This is running on my laptop live, which is running um, <laughs> a relatively recent Debian. So typically the first thing I'll do when I log, log into a machine, I want to know what's happening in PCP land. You just run the PCP command and it gives you an overview of the machine and what's running on it. Uh, where's my cursor? So these are all the agents, different domains of performance data that we know about. PMCD itself is instrumented. So in this demo here, I'm going to show some data coming out of PMCD, which is the PCP daemon. Uh, the Linux kernel agent will look at some stuff and I'll install an agent to monitor some interesting stuff for us. Um, so I'm going it, to, it's critically important to get response time data that your users will see when you're looking at performance problems in general. Uh, one way you can do that in a, with a generic tool that comes with PCP is this shell ping agent. So you can run a shell command and it will measure how long it takes and it will run it in a loop. So once every, however many, however often you configure it, wakes up, runs that command, times it, and makes that available as performance data alongside the rest of everything else in PCP. So this is the configuration file I'm going to give it. I'm just going to run a shell which exits immediately just to get a baseline for how long doing nothing takes. Or just running a shell and exiting. And then I'm going to run a shell with the PCP PM info command there, fetching the value for kernel.all.pswitch, which is the context switch rate. And I picked that one because it runs on both Windows or Linux, or whichever operating system. They all tend to export the context switch rate. Um, and so this is the go through the install script. I'm going to go with this one. Uh, actually, number one is the one I want to use. So that's the config file. Yes, I'll use that. I'll run it every five seconds. I'll time out stuff that doesn't finish in two seconds. So this is now just going to fetch from PMCD that particular value every five seconds, and it's going to time how long it takes. So over a period of time, I can see whether it's getting quicker or slower, and I can also compare other things that are happening on the system while that's going on. So this is the data, the metrics I've just added. This is a CAM chart running live. Now the only real difference is running in live mode, so it's exactly the same tool. Uh, I can now go and create a new chart using that, uh, those metrics I just added. So we want to look at elapsed time, which is time.real. I can plot those alongside the other things. So going back to my other charts, that's the CPU utilization chart. I often typically watch that because it's generally interesting to see whether what's going on in the CPU. You often get a good hint for whether things are different or not just by looking at CPU utilization. And that's aggregated across all CPUs, so it's 0 to 100. Um, this is the data coming out of the PMCD instrumentation. So we're looking at the number of packets coming into PMCD and the number of packets going out. So you can see there's a baseline there um, just from other things that are running. And um, so having to fetch these kernel values, for example, that traffic inside in and out of PMCD. Every five seconds, we've got the SH ping thing waking up, doing its thing, and that involves some PDUs into PMCD. And finally now we're monitoring number of milliseconds that our uh, response time uh, that we're interested in is taking. So we're looking at it down there we've got 
uh, four, four milliseconds to do nothing, six and a half milliseconds to get um, a message into PMCD, get that value out of the kernel and get it back out into user space and back into the client. So I'm going to skip over this because I'm completely out of time. I'll quickly whiz through the other charts if I'm allowed. through that, done that, so I'll skip that one. I'll, this stuff will all be on the web, but um, some interesting, uh, extremely important to have a model of performance in your head, have a good idea of what time is and a relationship between different times, how long things take and should take in the system. Um, and that's a very interesting table. I could go through it if I have time, but I probably don't. Uh, I'll skip some of this because I'm out of time. I'll have to skip that. I'll skip all of that. Uh, and that's where you can get some more data. So I'll put this talk up there if you want to see the second half that I ran out of time with. Um, largely sponsored by Iconex and SGI. A whole bunch of work being done by other people. Um, ports to Solaris and AIX by others. Uh, and any questions?